What is up, YouTubers and YouTubeettes? So, today we are going to be extracting tryptophan. And so, um, where, what tryptophan is, is if you think about Thanksgiving, people say that they always get sleepy after eating a turkey or whatever. Well, tuna fish has a lot more tryptophan in it than turkey does. Um, tuna fish has four to 500 milligrams uh, per ounce of tuna. And so in here, I have 10 ounces of tuna that I have in muriatic acid, 32.5%. And, a half percent. and um, so I don't exactly know how much acid I put in here. Um, I put the tuna in there, and then I put the acid in there until it completely covered the tuna. And then I added about 150 milliliters of water. And so they've been in this jar and I'd shake it a couple times a day for, um, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 days now at this point. And so the tuna in here does not stink or anything. I mean, it smells more fishy than it should, but it's, it doesn't smell of any kind of rot or anything. And so anyways, so what I'm gonna do is strain this. And once I get it strained, I'll be back. All right, I got it about done doing the vacuum filtration, and I'm gonna run it one more time. Even though the liquid looks clear, I'm gonna run it through a filter one more time, and then we're on to the next step. All right, so I'm double filtered, and I did a pH test, and so as you can see, my pH is at like one or two. And so now I'm going to add some saturated sodium hydroxide solution to this and I'm going to shoot for the pH of getting to 11 and then once I hit 11 I might go to 11.5 or try there but I'm trying not to shoot way past 12 um, and that will be crucial later on so you, you don't want to go crazy changing your pH with this with sodium hydroxide and so that's what I'm going to be doing is adding saturated sodium hydroxide to this solution and once I get my pH to 11, I'll be back. Something I'd like to point out real quick is that this is an exothermic reaction. It's not too crazy, but it will get warm. And so now you can see that I have like, kind of like floaty looking things in my solution. Those happened at the same time my pH really drastically changed. And I didn't hit 11, I went straight to 12. This is what it looks like from a side view, so you can kind of see what I mean by the floaties in it, if I can get a good view. There it goes. Okay, I transferred it to a jar with a lid, and then um, you can see all the amino acid which is what this stuff is is settling to the bottom and I'm gonna put it in a fridge until it cools off and it's important that you don't add anything um, at, past this point without it being chilled at least to room temperature and so once this is solutions cooled I'll be back my solution is good and cold and so now I'm going to add about, I don't know, 50 to 75 ml of DCM. And now I'm going to wait a day or so. And I'm going to shake this every once in a while for the next day. And it doesn't need to be in the in the fridge or nothing at this point. But um, I'm going to shake this every once in a while for a day. And at that point, I'll be back. So it's been like six hours, and about three hours ago, I added enough liquid to go up to 100 ml of DCM, and I shook it really well to an emulsion, and then, um, so yeah, like I said, it's been six hours now. <clears throat> Shake it up, and I'm going to wait longer now. Just showing you guys how you can see all the layers. Well, it's sat, it's been almost 24 hours now, and so I'm thinking that this layer here is a fat layer 
in the tuna. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decant off the yellow layer and then I'm going to put just this little these last two layers with a little bit of the th the top one. Um, of course in a separating funnel and then I'm going to just extract out the clear bottom layer. And so when I do that, I'll be back. All right, I'm just going to take a couple drops of my DCM in the bottom and put it over on here just to let it dry to show if that if it's going to be oily or if it's going to crystallize and that will let me know if I need to have a drier solution or not or if I need to defat or what steps I need to take or if it just crystallizes out just fine then I know that I can just take that my solution out of the bottom of that dry it and then I'll get my tryptophan that way. All right, you can see right there in the very middle of the screen there's little tiny crystals. So that's good. So I'm going to take my liquid and um, put it in my separatory funnel and then obviously separate them and then I'm going to put my DCM on a flat plate to dry out and I will get my D, uh, my tryptophan that way. And so that's all I have to do to get it out of tuna. So, right on guys. So I got about 100 milliliters of DCM to evaporate off. And um, I gotta take off to work now, so it'll just have to do that while I'm gone. <laughs> but my uh, theoretical yields a little over four and a half grams. The uh, tuna you can get about half a gram per ounce of of meat is what I found online, and so I I'm just hoping for four grams. That would be wicked cool. But yeah, I'll we'll see what I get when I'm back later. So I'm down to that much liquid, and I'm like, where's all my chip the fan at? And so I was thinking about it. Tuna doesn't really have any fat in it, and all, if it does, it's out by the skin. So, it was the stuff that was in the middle layer. And so that has to be it. Just has to be. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice too, guys. I got a good chest infection going on. It's killing me. But still didn't care a whole lot, but it doesn't matter. Just to see if I could do it. And there it is. If it for some reason turns out that that's not it, I will post that in the comments or in the description. But I'm calling that a win until I prove it otherwise. So, until next time, guys, have a good one.